Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about 10 ways your local game store is losing customers. When I opened my game store, and before you guys ask again, yes, it is open, and no, I'm not going to, if you figure out where it is, I'm not going to turn you away. Right now, I do want to keep it not open for the public or keep it very private until I get the inventory set up. And you will know when the inventory is set up because there will be an online store. Okay, so businesses, similar to other living objects, have life cycles. The end of which is death if no evolution takes place. In the millennials and Generation Z era, new businesses have to change and evolve while the traditional businesses have a hard time, just like at Toys R Us. The majority of local games are in the late, latter category of unchanging, unwilling to evolve, and losing customers left and right. Uh, here are the 10 reasons that people don't go to magic stores or choose to go to a different store. Stores can get in the comfort zone uh, when something works for an extended period of time, these established stores become more lazy. And it's like they have a certain way that they do stuff and they don't want to experiment with new ways. One of the stores in Houston, they, I don't think they've changed their marketing at all and they consistently lose customers. Number two, their online presence is not very good. You have to have an online presence nowadays. Uh, if you look at Rudy's store and you look at before Rudy, there was a guy called Dariums and the Card Shop Life. These are very successful businesses. Now he Darium does, does Pokemon, of course. So when you discuss and you talk about having social media, you know, Card Kingdom has it and they just made, Card Kingdom just made and spent a lot of money on the Magic for Her commercial. Professionally filmed, I assume. And then Channel Fireball has spent a lot of money on social media. The car, uh, which was Star City Games, duh. They spend a lot of money on social media and articles. You need an online presence. Um, not having one is unacceptable. I think that's where if I work really, really hard and to people who say I'm not committing, I have... I am committing, I have just let go a few different clients uh, and these clients make about half my marketing revenue. Now I don't really need it and we're still very profitable, but it's always nice to have double your revenue, but I'm gonna focus on this store because the only way that I can make it successful is if I do put skin in the game. Otherwise I'm going to be lazy and not do stuff. Uh, next, uh, poor decision making. I could have easily made a very poor decision early on when I was offered uh, inventory. And I was offered inventory at $80 a box for Dragon Maze, Dragons of Tark here, and then other stuff. No. Um, I bought most of my inventory from online vendors who sell at volume. The same people that I know Rudy buys from. Not all his vendors, uh, but there, there is one vendor we share in common with very, very cheap stuff. So next is poor customer support. I am looking to hire someone to take care of this. I know that I'm not great at customer support. I understand this. It is not one of my strengths. I'm a very good at what I do, which is uh, marketing, but I'm not good at providing customer support, which is different. Next, uh, unaggressive marketing. Competition is what's necessary to evolve. The market is incredibly co uh, competitive. I can name the uh, top of my head about within a 25 mile radius, probably 15 to 25 different stores in Humble, which is a very small, very poor city or poor town. The average median income of Humble is $37,000 a family. And on top of, you know, on top of that, um, you also have a situation where you have in Deerbrook Mall, there's three, four, maybe even five anime stores 
and they also carry magic and that doesn't include GameStop. If you included all the GameStops around us, it would probably be much, much higher number. And we also have two game stores. Uh, we had one that went bankrupt in Kingwood and then one that was near the Lowe's that also bankrupt. And the, the other one in the mall bankrupt as well. So yeah, you, you need marketing. Uh, lack of innovation. So there has to be something unique about your store. So my store has already sold a lot of uh, what I call portfolios. Remember like how I have so much barrage cards? Well, what I did was I put them all in a binder, which I bought from David Adams for like 50 cents. And then I, I'll show you sometime. And then I sold them at a discount. So each of these portfolios has legends, antiquities, and I just call it investment portfolio. And that's what I'm selling. And my customer base loves it because they just buy the thing. It's very pretty, by the way, because it's multiple copies of the same card. And a lot of them have gone up in price. So now I'm holding on to my portfolios because selling them actually was not great. All right, so lack of innovation, the old guard, so a lot of local stores have been around, local game stores have been around for a while. Therefore, their management and ownership circle consists of people who are a bit older and more old fashioned. So factoring in the larger consumer demographic is very young for Magic the Gathering. There is a disconnect between the older management and the younger uh, players, which is really what you want to get them addicted, right? To Magic. Uh, so you have to be flexible and you have to evolve. Uh, and flexibility means that they, you will lose customers. You also have to understand shifting preferences. So a lot of people prefer clean local game stores with really good food. The Twinkies, the really bad soda that's not even like name brand. Like this stuff is probably okay for like 1990s or even to 2000s, but it is not okay. I mean, you look at like the fancy coffee, uh, Mox Boarding House, um, I think there's one called Load Stone, Stone Gaming, correct, correct me um, with the correct name or sent, uh, if that's not correct, I'm pretty sure that's what it's named. And now people are serving high coffee, very fancy things. Uh, my store, is an anime store. So I've already moved all the anime merchandise over there. I've obviously kept my personal collection for my personal collection, but um, we have kind of an artistic flair. I, <laughs> it sounds very strange, but you have to see it. Like these uh, figures are absolutely not cheap to purchase, but even having them as decorations kind of sets us apart. We did recently buy a giant figure of Iron Man and that was expensive but I think it is a you know it's a very nice piece for our front door anyway that is it um, when you're a local store you have to deal with change you have to deal with uh, new customers you have to deal with a younger generation all this type of stuff I know a lot of you might ask hmm MTG Lion how why are you making videos on local game stores? Well, it's something that I'm very passionate about to the point that I basically have committed a lot of financial resources and a lot of my time. And I want a local game store. It might sound crazy. And I know Rudy doesn't like the concept of, oh, financially, it is very, very stupid to open a local game store. However, I've always wanted one. And after this buyout, I don't really have any other concerns. Now, yes, um, the people I bought out from are still kind of pestering me with some other stuff. Like, I'm not going to go into details about that, but it's kind of annoying that that's still happening. Although I bought the company in February 10th, and it's still happening to me right now. But regardless, I am very happy. And if the store fails, it won't be like, the end of my life, um, I'll just, you know, move on and do something that makes money at that point in time. But I've always wanted to own a local game store uh, because of my model. I want to buy. I want a place, you know, that I can buy lots of old magic cards 
because I appreciate the game. And by buying so many old Magic cards, I can increase my collection tremendously uh, and far easier than if I didn't have a local game store, just like my friend's model. I looked at his books and he breaks even. The first two years, he lost money. And the last year he broke even uh, with a tiny bit of profit. So he had a little bit of profit and that includes um, his employee and his expense. But his collection for retro games is insane. He owns two dozen copies, uh, sealed copies of each of the Pokemon games. And I think for Pokemon Silver, not the old Silver, but the new Silver with the Walker, like he has 200 plus copies of Pokemon Silver and Gold with the Walker. And out of the 200 copies, box copies, he has about 40 or 50 sealed of each, so 100. And that's just insane because someone had inventory and they bought it out from you know every Best Buy or something. They were buying all the video games. And then they had a bunch of these things and they were, they put them in Texas. People have storages, right? One of the biggest businesses in Texas is storage, storage units. So people just buy, 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 and they put them in the storage unit. And a few years later, they need cash, right? That's why they're in their storage unit to begin with. Otherwise, they would never even go there. And then they take it to the first place that they can go to and you find hundreds of Pokemon games. All box are, and some of them sealed. Anyway, bye guys.